And so I'm also going over those that stability and coping skill with the therapist and making sure that they're using that with the therapist. You're, ma you're, you're making that bridge from one I'm therapist also making, to another. Yeah. And I'm also seeing what skills are you as a therapist using to help with the coping with, and stabilization of this client. Because I want to use that same skill. I don't want to teach a new skill that may or may not work. I want to teach a skill that's, or use a skill that's already working. Right, and that won't be, and that will not be a conflict. Now I have a, I have a major question for you. How yeah. do you get the therapist that have referred to you? How do you get them? How do you get coordinate getting them to talk to you on Fridays? To take time out of their day. They already, uh, if, if they're, if, if they are referring a client to me, they already have a rapport with me. Okay. They already, they already have it. So and that is a relationship. They're already the therapist is already invested. Okay. So that's a relationship that you have, you have pre-built. Like yeah. You and I have known each other for a long time. So we would we would just naturally do this and and because of that the, the client is aware of that i, and that I know already, that's an important part i'm trying to bring yeah, the clients through. aware of that which also means there's an already establishment of safety mm -hmm. this isn't exactly. a cold this isn't a cold call good point you yeah. know this is a warm handoff yeah I say warm handoff, but it's not really a handoff either, right? Because it, 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 yeah, it's like a handhold, <laughs> a warm handhold. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hold, it. we're gonna hold your hand on both sides, and yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's already a rapport established there. That's great. Between me and the therapist, um, and it's been there. Usually, it, it's, it's. Um, it would be unusual that you're the first client of that therapist who's been referred to me. And of so course, this isn't like an experiment between two therapists. Most of the, most of the time, you're going to be somewhere, you know, up in the teens, maybe at this point of, you know, you're the 15th person referred to me by this clinician. Okay. So it's almost, it almost becomes a regular part of the process for the other therapist. Yeah, this is, there's a therapist, you know, I've been here, I've been here since June of 2019, and there's a therapist that I meet with ev almost every Friday, if not every other Friday, about one of her clients. And it's a different, it's usually a different client every, every month or so, every two months. Sometimes it's two clients, sometimes it's three clients. But I have I have regular meetings with this clinician on Fridays. And what happens if you have now I I know that you've had the ex the experience of um, being in a, a location and um, where there, excuse me, there are a, a lot of doctors that will just refer to you. They, they catch your name from somewhere and they refer to you and, or, oh, yeah. or like a mirror, mirror, home agency like or just different organizations that, that refer to you because they've heard your name and that you do good work or, or you pop up on a list. Uh, how do you, uh, how do you communicate and collaborate with uh, those? That's a little. That's a little harder with doctors. <laughs> uh, that's the reason I asked the question. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it's that's a that's a whole another story with doctors. I get um, a lot of neurologists. Not a lot. There's two in town that refer to me right now, neurologists, and um, they're not in the business of hanging out with their clients often. You know, they, they, they like to meet with the client or their patient and get the work done, give you a diagnostic, whatever diagnosis, 
and then that's when they send the referral off. And so I get, I get a few of those. And if that client comes to me, I always ask, we go through the EMDR process and I, I tell them that it's beneficial to have another therapist to continue on after this EMDR process or during this EMDR process. Mm -hmm. I ask if that happened, it doesn't always happen. And it's, it's not always a necessity. It's very beneficial, but it's not always a necessity. And how receptive is the medical community? Okay, you've talked about the, the pairing up with other therapists, but how receptive is the medical community? I know in, in, my, um, in, in my 30 years, I've had some just incredible experiences of working with nurse practitioners and working with neurologists and uh, where I have developed quite a good relationship, but we really compare um, and talk a lot about, because they're, they're looking at things from the medical side, I'm looking at things from the psychological perspective and we're comparing our information and and working together as as a team i'll yeah i always, always love the multidisciplinary teams that and, and, i've worked with in I'll, hospitals i'll be honest <laughs> i don't get i don't have a lot of close relationships with the the medical you know hospitals or clinics with the doctors and such yeah. i don't have a lot of close connections or close relationships with them um you know, my, my, you know, and I, I think I left this out last time and um, I didn't even think about it, but I also get a lot of referrals from churches because if you think about, I, and so I get, there's a few churches here in town that, that are connected with me and then there's uh, the clinicians and then there's word of mouth. And I really spend a lot of my time more so with the clinicians because they take a lot of time us therapists we like to talk <laughs> yeah you know as much listening as we do we love to talk as well and um whereas doctors want to be on and off the phone as fast as possible it seems um and that's nothing against them they just have a lot of work i mean i, I i'm 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 really i have a close friend that's a that's a doctor um and he's busy he's real busy <laughs> and but us therapists i mean we're busy too but we, there's something different um and so i spent a lot of time cultivating those relationships with the therapist uh that's my niche which makes sense so or the uh, or the where, church where i as a uh, going back to the, the primary care therapist, look at as much of the whole of what's going on in that individual's life, especially all of their health factors and what uh, medical practitioners that they're seeing and have a release sign to be able to speak with the medical practitioners when needed. And then I have close, uh, as I've said, I've, I've, the referrals that I've received from nurse practitioners and physician, primary care physicians that I've worked with, especially, um, and other psychiatrists, we have a lot of communication going both ways. Yeah. Except whereas you're going to get your referrals from word of mouth and another therapist mm -hmm. yep okay so when you you mentioned one time and i'm just wanting to kind of pick your brain on this a little bit in terms of exactly what you meant you we talked about we talked about collaboration just briefly and you mentioned about that since you have been in practice um, you've learned a lot about collaboration and, and what did you mean by that? Is that what we've been talking about or exactly what the importance of collaboration? What did you mean by that? 
So when I meet with the client, it's important um, that they understand that they're part of a system. Like they have a system of support for themselves, right? A family, whatever it is, they have a system of support. And I know that if they have a strong system of support, it's in the research, mm -hmm. that quality of life is much better large improvements. Same thing with parent engagement with the child. We're working with the child. We know that if there's strong parent engagement, the outcomes are gonna look a lot better. So collaboration, it's under the same definition, same purpose here for me, is that if I'm collaborating with others, if we've got a team of individuals, if we've got a system of support, for this client, outcomes are going to be better every time. And so that includes me working with the other support systems, whether that be the other therapist, the other doctor. That means I may have to pick up the phone and connect. So I, I'm, I'm going to throw this. Social plan, thing, yeah. <clears throat> the social work thing back at you because when you had said in a previous uh, a discussion, well, I'm a social that, worker first, by the way. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm I'm getting ready to bring up is that what you were saying that you're doing is very much social work practice in terms of getting that supportive network built up. Getting I call it building an building an army, <clears throat> a supportive network around a client. When, when, you, when you get established with an EMDR therapist who's a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you're getting the treatment of EMDR. You might even get, uh, with a psychiatrist, you might get medications with that treatment. With a psychologist, you're going to get more evaluations. You're going to get a lot of data. With a social worker, you're gonna get the treatment, but you're also getting support and stabilization. A building you're, you're, of you're resources getting, and you're getting a team built with you. Yes. You're okay. get, yes. So in other words, what you're saying, it, depending on <clears throat> the background, of the EMDR therapist, which can be a social worker, it can be a licensed professional counselor, it can be a psychologist, it can be a uh, MD, it can be a nurse practitioner, depending on their primary practice or their field of expertise, they're going to flavor their EMDR treatment. Well, the EMDR treatment is going to be the same across the board it's going to be emdr plus <laughs> whatever <laughs> the background is emdr plus medicine emdr plus psychology emdr plus social work yeah okay that's you know that, that that's a good thought that's interesting okay which totally makes sense Asking, what do your credentials mean? Well, what do you I do? would advocate that people interview the therapist. Yeah. It's not the therapist interviewing, interview, interviewing you. You are there to mutually interview mm -hmm. the therapist. And uh, hopefully a lot of that can be done at an intake call over the telephone first. Uh, and then that would just be uh, enhanced at the first session because right. that's a that's a meeting of whether or not you're going to connect and and be able to get along with each other. And if you don't, don't don't try to force it. You're right. One hundred percent. 
have you had uh have have you had experiences where there have been times when you have met with clients that the connection just was not there and y'all mutually or maybe not so mutually decided that it would be best if they went had how how have you yeah, had yes it happened but here's okay. the thing when it happens my fear and this is just my fear is that if when it happens because it does is that the client now is like well i don't even know where to start again and so sometimes it happens two ways okay so if i if the client doesn't think it's going to be a match i want to help the client find a match exactly yes that's the social work <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay that's a social work aspect i want to make sure that the client has the resources the team and to find the match now sometimes when i begin to do that then the then the client and and there, there's a there's a reason for this there's a reason why this happens but sometimes when i investigate and i work with the client on figuring out a match they end up saying you know what i actually like you mm -hmm. I would like to work with you. Mm -hmm. And that happens through me finding somebody. Because there's something about within their system that didn't fully trust me yet. It wasn't sure. It, it, and most of the time, these are my individuals um, where um, a parent or somebody, close caregiver, has left them often to defend for themselves in some way. And then when they see that I'm gonna stick around for a little bit, then their system settles and says, oh, this is a safe person. So are you saying that initially, it seems like there is, they're basically saying, I'm not so sure if this is going to work out. And then when you start uh, kind of putting on your social work hat, and say, let me help you find someone that would, uh, or give you some suggestions of other people that you might want to meet with. And I'll tell you where it happens the most. <laughs> it's usually with individuals that need that are wanting to use their insurance. That's where it happens the most. Okay. Uh, where I, I tell them that I don't take insurance and they say, well, can you help me find somebody that does? And I say, sure, let us start looking. And then we start looking and they want to book an appointment with me. Because they have seen your willingness to go out of your way to help. That's not, that, that is not going to cost them anything uh, other than you just are trying to get them connected with someone else yeah. yep and a lot of yeah and i mean not to get into insurance talk but but getting into insurance talk sometimes when they've seen me it's gone towards their deductible still so you can do and uh, yeah the the insurance and i can do out of network billing right <laughs> or you pay and then i send you a super bill and they reimburse you as the client. And, you and sometimes can, that will go towards their deductible. Sometimes. Sometimes it'll go toward their deductible and sometimes it'll even be reimbursed back to the client. Right. Um, if, but yes, the, the insurance versus no insurance is uh, a whole nother subject we'll have to, we'll have to take up because that's a very, um, that's a very complicated topic. It's one of my favorites because, um, well, you know from working with me that, you know, I've, I've been doing insurance for a long time and gone with the whole roller coaster of 30 years of the changes of insurance. But um, I enjoy talking insurance, but a lot of practitioners now do not want to deal with the 
massive amounts of paperwork and recertification that it takes to be an insurance provider. Yep. 